Once there was a king named Maharaj Janapad. He had two queens named Saruchi and Suniti. Once upon a time, King Uttanapad was patting the son of Saruchi, Uttam, placing him on his lap. Dhruva Maharaj was also trying to get on the lap of the king. Saruchi, his stepmother, became very envious of the child. My dear child, you do not deserve to sit on the throne or the lap of the king. Because you did not take your birth from my womb, you are not qualified to sit on your father's lap. If you at all desire to rise to the throne of the king, then you have to undergo severe austerities. First of all, you must satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan. And then, when you are favored by him, you shall have to take your next birth from my womb. As a snake, when struck by a stick, breathes very heavily, Dhruva Maharaj, having been struck by the strong words of his stepmother, began to breathe very heavily because of great anger. When he saw that his father was silent and did not protest, he immediately left the palace and went to his mother. My dear son, don't wish for anything inauspicious for others. Anyone who inflicts pain upon others suffers himself from that pain. My dear boy, whatever has been spoken by Saruchi is so. Because the king, your father, does not consider me his wife or even his maidservant. He feels ashamed to accept me. Therefore, it is a fact that you have taken birth from the womb of an unfortunate woman. Whatever has been spoken by Saruchi, your stepmother, although very harsh to hear, is factual. Therefore, if you desire at all to sit on the same throne as your stepbrother, Uttam, then give up your envious attitude and immediately try to execute the instructions of your stepmother. Without further delay, you must engage yourself in worshipping the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is so great that simply by worshipping his lotus feet your great-grandfather, Lord Brahma, acquired the necessary qualifications to create this universe. My dear boy, you should take shelter of the Supreme Lord also, who is very kind to his devotees. As far as I am concerned, I do not find anyone who can mitigate your distress but the Supreme Personality of Godhead whose eyes are like lotus petals. Therefore, after deliberate consideration, and with intelligence and fixed determination, he left his father's house. The great sage Nard Muni overheard this news, and understanding all the activities of Dhruva Maharaj, he was struck with wonder. My dear boy, you are only a little boy whose attachment is to sports and other frivolities. Why are you so affected by words insulting your honour? This kind of dissatisfaction is another feature of the illusory energy of the Lord. Now you have decided to undertake the mystic processes of meditation under the instruction of your mother just to achieve the mercy of the Lord. But in my opinion, such austerities are not possible for any ordinary man. It is very difficult to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. After trying this process for many, many births and remaining unattached to material contamination, 
many mystic yogis were unable to find the end of the path of God-realization. For this reason, my dear boy, you should not endeavor for this. It will not be successful. It is better that you go home. When you are grown up, by the mercy of the Lord, you will get a chance for these mystic performances. At that time, you may execute this function. My dear Lord Naraji, for a person whose heart is disturbed by the material conditions of happiness and distress, whatever you have so kindly explained for attainment of a peace of mind is certainly a very good instruction. But as far as I am concerned, I am covered by ignorance, and this kind of philosophy does not touch my heart. My dear Lord, I am very impudent for not accepting your instructions, but, but this is not my fault. It is due for me having born in a Satria family. My stepmother Saruchi has pierced my heart with her harsh words. O oh, learned Brahman, I want to occupy a position more exalted than any yet achieved within the three worlds by anyone, even by my fathers and grandfathers. The instruction given by your mother, Suniti, to follow the path of a devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is just suitable for you. You should therefore completely absorb yourself in the devotional service of the Lord. My dear boy, I therefore wish all good fortune for you. You should go to the bank of the Yamuna where there is a virtuous forest named Madhuvan and there be purified and after bathing you should perform the necessary regulative principles for Ashtanga Yoga and then sit down on your asan in a calm and quiet position. Practice the three kinds of breathing exercises and thus gradually control the life air, the mind and the senses. Completely free yourself from all material contamination and with great patience begin to meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord's form is always youthful. He is more beautiful than all the demigods. The entire body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vasudev is decorated. He wears a valuable jeweled helmet, necklaces and bracelets. His neck is adorned with the Kastoba jewel and he is dressed in yellow silk garments and wears a beautiful flower garland around his neck. The Lord is decorated with small golden bells around his waist and his lotus feet are decorated with golden ankle bells. All his bodily features are very attractive and pleasing to the eyes. One who meditates in this way Concentrating his mind upon the always auspicious form of the Lord is very soon freed from all material contamination and he does not come down from meditation upon the Lord. Now I shall speak unto you the mantra which is to be chanted with this process of meditation. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This is the twelve syllable mantra for worshipping Lord Krishna. My dear Dhruva, besides chanting the mantra, you should meditate upon the transcendental activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his different incarnations as exhibited by his supreme will and personal potencies. Anyone who thus engages in the devotional service of the Lord seriously and sincerely with his mind, words and body is blessed by the Lord according to his desire. If a devotee desires material religiosity, economic development, sense gratification or liberation from the material world, he is awarded these results. When Dhruva Maharaj, the son of the king, was thus advised by the great sage Narad, he started for Madhuvan, which is always imprinted with the lotus footprints of Lord Krishna and which is therefore especially auspicious. Mm -hmm.